Hello, my name's Alan Newberry, and today we're going to make this spear right here. We're going to do it from a bar of steel just like this one. We're going to forge a socket, we're going to differentially heat treat the blade, and we're going to make and attach the shaft. So, this is the same videos that we have a part one, two, three, and four of forging a spear. And this is just a slightly condensed version where they're all together in one video. So let's go take a look. In this video, we will be forming this specific socket right here from this bar of W2 steel. So let's take a look. All right, the first thing that we're going to do is to widen the bar of steel and try to make kind of a triangular shape so that we will have the required metal to form the socket. As I'm forging out the width that I need to start the cone, I kind of get a couple of ears on the top of the uh, cone. So what I'm going to do is just knock those down with a big hammer. Um, then the next thing is I'm going to further refine the shape by narrowing the waist a little bit with a fullering tool. see where I have narrowed the waist with the spring fuller. Uh, the spring fuller is basically just a big bar of spring steel that has been kind of thinned out in the middle and then bent over and then hardened and tempered to form a spring so that it will kind of close and bounce back whenever you're forging. Now I'm going to go over here and further refine that waist that I started with the fullering tool. I'm going to taper off where the blade will start and then I'm also going to uh, work on the actual socket part as well. And here's where we're at so far. I've got kind of a nice triangular shape and it tapers into the blade. Um, it's still a little fat right there, so I'm going to kind of start to thin that back down a little bit. And I'm also going to start kind of widening the base of that triangle and kind of make it not quite as triangle shape anymore. So what we'll do there is that'll give us a little bit more meat whenever I wrap the um, socket around the bick, and that will help to have enough meat there so that the two sides can meet together. to see here is a trick that's kind of done off camera but what I did was measured around a circle with a little bit of overlap with paper to see how wide I needed my socket to be so you'll see me grab a piece of paper and then lay down what will eventually be the socket on that paper to see if it has reached the required size yet so now I'm moving over to the power hammer and I'm going to do that widening that I was talking about, kind of widening the base of the socket up a little bit so that'll give me enough width so that the two sides can overlap so that they can be forge welded together. This is the final pre-rolling shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and start rolling the socket. What I'm doing here is just using the shelf on my anvil and hammering it to get it started. Then I'm going to go ahead and just put it on edge hammer to get that roll started.
continue rolling using the hammer and anvil, just keep rotating it, finding the right angles to hit things to to forge the shape of the socket. Right here I basically picked which part is going to be on bottom and which part is going to be on top, so now I can start rolling it a little bit more tightly. You've got to make sure you have a decent amount of heat. If it's thin, it loses heat quick, and you don't want to be banging on it while it's black because you'll make things crack. got it basically rolled up. It's time to go ahead and start moving it over to the BIC. Um, with this, first I'm just kind of driving it on there so that I can get that BIC all the way up there as far towards the uh, beginning of the socket as I can. And so I'm just hammering from the other end and then kind of starting to do a little bit of the wrapping. But you can't do a whole lot of it in that first heat just because once you put it on there, the thin metal wants to cool really quick. I basically got the socket prepared for forge welding. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and grab some flux. What I'm using is borax. There's a lot of other types of flux you can use, but that's what I'm using here. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on while it's nice and hot, and it'll start bubbling up and melting, and then we'll get that back in the forge, and we'll be able to get this weld started. welding you're going to want it to be really hot. You can see here it just kind of has this great glow to it. You kind of see vapors coming off of it and it looks pretty cool. But it has to be really hot for them to actually forge weld together. If it's not hot enough, it's just not going to stick. If you get it really any hotter, it's going to start sparking and melting away. So there's a real you know, narrow window of heat that you're going for. It's towards the top end, and you have to be very careful and keep an eye on it. It's not something you want to stick it in the forge and walk away from. You've got to make sure you're really paying attention. When you're forge welding, you really hope that you get it the first time. The second time, maybe you're going to have, you know, still the ability to have some success. But really, after each additional time, it kind of gets a little harder and harder for you to be able to get things to stick. I, I try it several times here, and I think I really get most of it to stick pretty good. But really, it's those first couple times when you're wanting it to work. Right here, I come over and I just bend that right back because, hey, this is forging. You can still bend and move the metal around. is put the spear tip into the forge. We only need to get the tip of the spear hot and then we are going to start forging a point. It's going to take a little bit of time and effort because this uh, bar of steel is pretty thick so I'll have to hit on it a little bit to get a nice point on there. The tip is starting to take shape. You can see that I'm kind of uh, pushing the tip back a little bit so you're starting to see a little bit more of a, a pointy look and more of an ovalish type shape to the overall blade. It's taken a while and several heats. I really wish I could have used my bigger hammer but I've been babying my elbow after injuring it last fall. So what I'm doing now is setting up uh, this form, this preform for the power hammer to do the next step, which is going to be putting in the distal taper 
for the spear. So once I have this to a somewhat spearish shape, I'm going to take it over to the power hammer. Now we are forging in that distal taper. What this is going to do is have it be nice and skinny and pointy at the tip area and it's going to help with the part that is not thinned out to swell out even fatter than this tip area is going to swell out. The power hammer is very helpful and it can do a whole lot of that brute force work but generally when I come off the power hammer there's a little bit of finesse work to get everything pointed back where I want it and lined up how it should be and so after I do the power hammer work I go and I smooth things out adjust things just a little bit to set it back up to go into the power hammer again this time to forge out the bevels of the spear which is going to give it its nice leaf shape so now we're ready to move on to the power hammer we're gonna start forging there towards the base end of the blade of the spear and we're gonna to try to spread that way out to give it that nice leaf shape and so we're gonna work more there on the fatter bits because the distal taper that area is fatter so there's more meat so it can widen out more than the tips gonna be able to widen out now we've just about got one of the sides forged out so we're going to now be able to flip this guy over and start working on the other side. Then it'll be a bit more of fine tuning and trying to match both sides up as far as width goes. Now that we're done with the power hammer, we've had the bulk of the metal moved, but there's still little uh, irregularities and dents and divots and areas that need to be kind of cleaned up and shapes that need to be tweaked but with the most of the metal moved it's not nearly as big of a chore as it would have been once the forging is pretty much done you can start working on the straightening and lining everything up this tweaking time can take quite a bit not not unlike when you forging a blade of a knife or a sword it it seems like you can spend almost as much time uh, fiddling around with everything to try to get everything lined up just right I'm not gonna show all of it here and in fact it's still not quite done getting everything lined up but you can see uh, where we're going with it. The next steps will be normalization, grinding, hardening, and tempering. At this point, we have forged, and now we have also normalized, and we are going to refine the profile of the blade. So at this point, if your tips may be a little bit off one way or the other, you can grind it over a bit. If one side isn't quite matching up with the other, you can grind it a little bit to make it more symmetrical so that's kind of the good part of this process here then I'm going and basically finding where the center of the blade is trying to mark my edges so I'm kind of carefully grinding off each side and at a pretty sharp angle there and finding where is the center of the blade need to be and then I just grind over to that point and then I'm checking it from you know different angles to make sure I don't need to fudge it over to one way or the other then after I have that marked what I can do is go ahead and start grinding the, the main bevels there on the spear so grinding a spear it's basically like a huge dagger so I grind one side, then grind the other, then flip it over, and then grind the other two sides. And it's kind of a tricky grinding just because, with as with daggers, you have the four sides instead of just two. So you also have to maintain uh, a center line, and then also the plunges are tricky just because, well, there's more of them, and you have to get them to all line up. So it's a, it's a little bit tricky and then you can just kind of keep progressing keep going 
bring that grind line down towards the center and once you've gotten it kind of close to there you can start progressing through your different grits I'm starting off here with a 36 grit and then I'll go 60 then 120 then 220 then 400 and uh, then a scotch bright belt here I am starting to mix some satanite for the heat treating so what we're gonna do is a differential heat treat using clay so I'm kind of going for a toothpaste kind of consistency here so that takes a little bit to get there because you want to get just the right amount of water without having to go back out to the garage to get more satanite to to make it thicker so it's better to just kind of add a little bit of water at a time till you get the consistency you're after with clay a lot of times it's better to do a much thinner application but for this particular technique which is where I'm going to uh, put it into the quench it and just leave it there. I'm not taking it out and doing an interrupted quench. Uh, in this case, then having it relatively thick is okay. So here you can see that the blade isn't ground all the way uh, to its finished amount of grinding because I'm going to save some of that for after the heat treat. Um, so I'm just kind of starting with the application of clay and then I will use uh, my fingers to even it out making sure I have about the same thickness and amount on both sides then I can clean it up with my wet fingers I have a little cup of water that I can dip my fingers into to help it from uh, sticking to my fingers then I have a little technique where I pinch along both sides so I will have my top finger my thumb there and my uh, pointer finger are both sculpting so both sides are getting sculpted at the same time one side's gonna look better than the other but I will have it kind of at least approximately done on the other side and then I can go back and clean it but it will match uh, the one on the top and the bottom should be somewhat matching and I can kind of refine it afterwards once I have done it with the two fingers I can just go back and kind of pinch it and make everything sharper and that's basically what I'm shooting for with this so I will have kind of a tough center core and then a harder outer edge and uh, it gives a kind of a cool look um, unfortunately my battery died right when I was ready to do the quench so uh, basically all you get to see is me putting it into the oven and uh, that's kind of where we leave it on the heat treating after that I do grinding you grind it out to uh, the finished look and polish that you're after in my case, um, I kind of went with a 400 grit, and then I went to a Scotch-Brite belt, and then there we are. First thing you're going to want to do is find a very straight grain piece of something along the lines of oak or ash. In this case, I went with oak, and then cut it into a square-type shape. In this case, I went with uh, inch and a quarter, or final dimensions, I was going for inch and an eighth. And so I cut that out, then I used a draw knife to make it round, and then I used this spoke shape here to really refine uh, the roundness and the smoothness of the pole. Uh, later on in the fit-up, I used a cabinet maker's rasp to fit the shape of the socket. Now, after having made it nice and smooth with the spoke shape, I used this scraper to get a very smooth finish. Then after that, I burn it with a little propane torch here, and then after I've got it done that way, it gives it a really cool black appearance and uh, just a look I really like. Then after that, I take some beeswax and rub it on there while it's still hot, and uh, that kind of does a nice little protective for it and gives it a cool finish, and the, the wax is actually kind of a smooth yet still kind of a grippy finish. Um, then I burnish it with a little piece of antler here to, to really make it nice and smooth. It gives it a cool weathered effect, kind of like a, you know, a piece of wood that has just been handled for a very long time, which I think is appropriate for kind of uh, an antique looking type of uh, weapon here. Then, whenever I've got it all kind of put together, I have a hole drilled all the way through both pieces. I riveted one end uh, of a piece of copper, then I cut it a little bit shorter so that it's just a little bit sticking up. Then I'm going to paint it over to match the other side, uh, 
with a little ballpoint hammer here, or ballpoint keen hammer, and then I will you know, just kind of keep going at it until both sides are matching pretty good. So uh, here in just a second you'll see me pick it up and I'll look at both sides to see if I have it uh, nice and matching or not. Another thing to note here, it's good to kind of round off the end of that pin, just to kind of remove the corner, just so that when you're hammering, it won't be as likely to split on you, which is something that uh, whenever you're peening something, it's kind of prone to do. So here I got them mashed fairly well, and uh, it makes, I think, a kind of a cool accent, plus it's uh, functional in helping to hold it on, but you're wanting to make sure it was on there pretty good anyway before that. Anyway, here it is. It's all fit up, and it is a very functional piece of uh, weaponry, and it's awfully fun, and I cannot wait to get out there and start chopping, slicing, stabbing things. I've got a few ideas. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this project as much as I did. I really had a good time. And I decided to keep this spear. I've been using it and throwing it into things. That's why it's got some uh, patina already developing on here. And I'll continue to have fun throwing it at stuff and slicing things with it. And uh, if you're thinking about making a spear as a project, it's a really fun project. So I think you really ought to give it a go. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments section below. And I'll be sure to get back with you. And thanks for watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and to ring the bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thanks a lot.